Good morning. Welcome to Breakfast with Charlie State and Naga Munchetti. Our headlines today. Millions of women who lost out when the pension age was raised will find out today if they could be entitled to compensation. A grieving husband says he was given ashes by a funeral director four weeks before his wife was actually cremated. Good morning. No relief in sight for first-time buyers and those renewing mortgages. As experts predict, the Bank of England will keep interest rates at 5.25% later today. The rising cost of school trips means many schools are no longer organising them. We look at the impact. Good morning. Across the northern half of the country today is going to be cloudy, wet and windy. Across the southern half it starts cloudy, but there'll be some sunny breaks and it will be mild. I'll have all the details later in the programme. Good morning. It's Thursday the 21st of March. Millions of women born in the 1950s who were affected by the government's decision to raise their state pension age in line with men will find out today whether they could be entitled to compensation. The campaign group Women Against State Pension Equality, also known as WASPI, says the change plunged tens of thousands of them into poverty. Our reporter Azadi Moshiri has more. Could this be the day they've been fighting for? WASPI have been demanding compensation for years after their retirement plans collapsed. For many, the wait has been painful. Some people had to sell their homes. Some people had their divorce settlements worked out on a state pension age of 60 because at the time the judiciary didn't even know that the state pension age had increased for women. Um, some people are absolutely destitute and didn't have any money to survive so they've had to take out loans from either family or even worse loan sharks um, so the women are really hoping that they will have a reasonable compensation for all the money that they've lost the state pension age used to be 60 for women and 65 for men but since 2010 women's state pension age was raised and brought in line with men's. It's risen again since, and today it stands at 66 for both men and women. Yet thousands of women born in the 1950s argue the changes happened at too short notice and were badly communicated. Waspy argue this affected 3.8 million women and that many didn't even know they'd have to wait longer to receive their state pension. They say they didn't get a chance to plan for it. Suddenly knowing that I wasn't going to get it for another six years dramatically affected um, my standard of living and um, it's money that I will never get back. But I've accepted that. But I do feel that the government should have let me and the other women know that um, this delay was coming down the tracks. We had no notice at all. The parliamentary ombudsman had already ruled government officials were too slow to tell them. Today, the final report and its recommendations are expected, but the ombudsman has no power to refund lost pensions. The Department of Work and Pensions has said ministers are unable to comment until after the report has been published. The government has previously argued, though, that as people continue to live longer, state pension ages had to go up. But these women say they went about it the wrong way, and they're ready for their payday. Azadeh Mashiri, BBC News. Five minutes past nine is the time. Charlie, um, the phrase ping pong, most people would think, what are we talking about, table tennis? What are we talking about? But in politics, it's quite a, a known phrase, and it refers to the back and forth between the two houses. Absolutely right. So what we're talking about is MPs now having to wait until after Easter to vote on Rishi Sunak's flagship Rwanda bill after the House of Lords passed a series of further amendments to the draft law. The legislation would revive the government's plan to send some asylum seekers to Rwanda by declaring the country as safe. Let's speak to our political correspondent, Henry Zephman. Morning to you, Henry in Westminster. So as Nago was saying, some people think of ping pong as a bit of fun with some bats and a table. 
When you think of ping pong, you think of something entirely different. I think of the back and forth between the House of Commons and the House of Lords, Charlie, of course. Doesn't everyone? And we're quite far into this back and forth now. This is the second go the House of Lords has had at this piece of legislation. The way the legislative process works in Parliament is that something can't become law until both the House of Commons and the House of Lords agree on exactly the same version of that law. And at the moment, the House of Lords wants to beef up protections around international law and various other aspects to this flagship Rwanda bill that the government's been trying to get into law for quite some time now. Now, because the House of Lords has sent it back to the House of Lords with more changes, more red pen written all over it, metaphorically speaking, it's now not going to be before MPs again until they return from their Easter break. That's 15th of April, week beginning the 15th of April. In that week, I expect we'll have a fast flurry of ping pong. I think actually after that, the House of Lords will back down quite quickly. But then you get to, I think, the more important questions. We've heard three Conservative Prime Ministers saying that getting flights of asylum seekers off to Rwanda will act as a crucial deterrent for those making the perilous journey in small boats across the English Channel. If the government finally gets a flight off, we'll find out whether they were right. Or whether, as Labour argue, this is a gimmick which will actually have no deterrent effect at all. And then for Conservative MPs who argue that getting a flight off will be a political boost to the party, which will change how some people vote in a general election, we'll have answers to that as well, just not for a little while. Henry, thank you very much. A grieving man has claimed he was given ashes by a funeral director four weeks before his wife was actually cremated. Peter Welburn paid almost £2,000 to legacy independent funeral directors in Hull, a company which is being investigated by police. Our reporter, Aruna Ayanga, has this report. The doors are boarded up at legacy funeral directors in Hull. There's anger in the community after police raided its premises. They've removed 35 bodies and a quantity of ashes from one of the company's sites. It's part of an ongoing investigation over concerns about the care of the deceased. One of those grieving is former trawlerman and granddad Peter Wellburn. He paid £1,900 to Legacy for a funeral for his wife Shirley. They'd been married for 33 years. She died on the 25th of November in all old infirmary. <laughs> But Peter's found out the ashes he was given after her funeral on December the 23rd, just before Christmas, might not be hers. He was told by a crematorium in Leeds that she was cremated there on the 16th of January, weeks after he was given the ashes by legacy. Well, I think he's just given me uh, some ashes to keep me peaceful and the beans all happy over Christmas, which is disgusting. It just give me anybody's ashes. Peter says he'll keep the ashes he's received safe, but he doesn't know whose they are. <laughs> she didn't deserve all this. She went through a lot in hospital. As part of a police investigation into Legacy, a man and woman have been arrested on suspicion of fraud and prevention of a lawful and decent burial. They've since been released on bail. Aruna Iyengar, BBC News. An expert witness was asked by a post office prosecutor to change his testimony in a case that resulted in a postmistress being wrongfully jailed. Fujitsu engineer Gareth Jenkins rephrased parts of a report on the Horizon IT system after receiving advice from his barrister. He'd been told his original statement could be damaging to the post office's case against Seema Misra, who was convicted of theft and false accounting. Junior doctors in England have voted to stage a further six months of industrial action in their long-running pay dispute. Doctors Union, the British Medical Association, called on the government to come forward with what it said was a credible offer. A Department of Health spokesperson said more strikes would damage progress on reducing waiting lists. So today is the day the Bank of England will uh, pronounce the latest news on interest rates. And uh, Ben, we don't know what they're going to say in advance, but oh, there is a, a widespread thought that it will stay the same. Yes, and whatever they do, it affects so many of us. First time buyers and those renewing mortgages will want to know when will the cost of mortgages come down and stay down. Most experts think later this year, but the Bank of England is not expected to start cutting borrowing costs just yet. 
Mortgages have become more expensive because they're based on the Bank of England's main interest rate. That went up sharply over the past two years, reaching 5.25% as the bank tried to tackle inflation, the rate at which goods and services go up in price. The idea is that making borrowing more expensive means people have less to spend. That reduces demand for things, slowing down price rises and easing cost of living pressures. And that appears to be working. In February, inflation slowed to 3.4%, sharply down from its peak. So pressure is now growing on the Bank of England to cut interest rates. But while inflation remains above the target of 2%, the fear is that cutting rates too soon could trigger another round of high inflation and painful price rises. So we expect the interest rate to be held at the current level, which of course is good for savers who are getting a better return on their cash savings after years of almost nothing, but that will be little comfort for the 1.6 million people renewing mortgage deals this year and facing a big jump in their monthly payments. And don't forget, you can follow the interest rates decision live as it happens on the BBC iPlayer at midday. Just go onto the iPlayer and look out for BBC News Live. And it is a decision that affects us all, whether borrowers or savers. Naga, Charlie. Thanks, man. 12 minutes past nine is the time. So if you are a chocolate lover, you may want to listen up because some Easter eggs are 50% more expensive than they were last year. Others are shrinking in size and not getting cheaper. So this is research from the Consumer Association, which look at the price of Easter chocolate from brands including Maltesers, Lindt, Cadbury, being sold in different supermarkets. One egg had increased by as much as 62.5%. It is not bigger, but it's more expensive. Experts say it's down to extreme weather having an impact on the cocoa, har cocoa harvest. No Love extreme. That. What? Love the, that you machine. like seeing the machinery, don't you? So fast, looks like it's speeded up. It's just very quick. Joy machines. It's amazing. Um, no such extreme weather here. Although Carol, we, Carol, that is a miserable picture, my friend. It is pretty foggy, isn't it, Naga? Good morning, everyone. This is a picture that was taken by one of our weather watchers a wee bit earlier in Guernsey. You can see the fog, the moisture in the air as well, and there is mist and fog across parts off England and Wales this morning and some fog across the English Channel and the Channel Islands. Now we've got rain continuing to push southwards across Scotland and Northern Ireland into Northern England and North Wales. Behind it, very windy, blustery showers and ahead of it, the mist and fog will lift, some of it will just lift into low cloud mind you and we'll be looking at some sunny spells developing and in the sunshine we could hit 17 degrees somewhere in the southeast. Now as we head through the evening and overnight, our weather front continues to drift steadily southwards, taking its cloud and rain with it. It's a cold front, so the air behind it will turn colder and we're looking at showers wintry on higher ground and cold in the north, mild in the south. But it'll be cold enough in some sheltered glens for a touch of frost and possibly some ice on untreated surfaces. Tomorrow then we've got our weather front slowly drifting down into the far southeast with its cloud and rain, some sunshine behind, Gales across the north, particularly so the northern and western isles, and prolific showers coming in on the wind. Some of those will be heavy and thundery with some hail and wintry and higher ground. And the temperature coming down in the north behind that weather front, and it will continue to do so as we go through the weekend. Saturday, widely windy. The wind chill will really make it feel colder than the temperatures you'll see in a minute will suggest. And look at all these showers. Again, a mixture of rain, hail, sleet and on higher ground we'll see some snow but look at that top temperature nine and then when you add on the wind chill charlie and naga it will feel much colder okay uh, good advice and we'll pay attention that's okay is it you just given that the well, okay no i've said thank you okay i'm listening to carol which is a rare thing so i think you know we <laughs> should celebrate it <laughs> <laughs> oh, thank you, Naga, I think. Uh-huh. Um, we're not quite sure, are we? <laughs> Good eye movement now. Like the Enjoy eye the weekend, now. Nice. Carol. <laughs> nice touch. Time now to get a quick look at the headlines where you are. Hello there, good morning. 
Scotland has become the worst country in Europe for unqualified beauticians providing customers with cosmetic injections. That's according to some healthcare professionals. Three years ago, the Scottish government promised to consider tighter rules, but ministers still haven't given a time frame. Registered practitioners are warning that growing numbers of patients are now coming to harm. The Scottish government said they're focused on the development of future regulation. I think it's completely wrong and it's been uh, 10 years that you know me, myself and my colleagues have sat around the table with the Scottish Government and very little has been done and it's inexcusable because there are other people now, the, pe the public injecting the public without any redress. The UK's first trial using artificial intelligence to detect breast cancer has found tumours missed by human doctors. They were spotted in 11 women at NHS Grampian last summer. The AI examined the mammograms of 10,000 women and also reduced the time it takes to notify them from 14 days to three. Results will be submitted to the science journal Nature in the coming months. Elsewhere, mountain rescue volunteers have been busier than normal this past winter. Since the 1st of December, volunteers have carried out over 120 rescues. That's a 6% increase on last year. More than a third of all these jobs resulted in injuries, most of them serious. Police and volunteers have also dealt with eight fatalities. We had uh, a guy lost on Ben McDewey, uh, Scotland's second highest mountain. You know, it was weather not unlike this, but much colder. And when we found him, you know, the guy was, was suffering hypothermia. So when he was found, it was uh, not, you know, it was a, a good time. Another few hours and things would have got a lot worse for that guy. And you can see more on this on our special programme, Scotland's Weather, our changing seasons tonight at 8 o'clock on the BBC Scotland channel or an iPlayer. And finally, the actor Brian Cox is the newest patron of the Edinburgh Festival Fringe. He was one of a number of people who voiced concerns about rising costs, preventing people taking part. His role as ambassador, alongside fellow patron Eddie Izzard and president of Phoebe Waller-Bridge, will be to encourage the next generation of performers and audiences. And then Kirsty has the weather. Good morning. It's a windy day today, thanks to an area of low pressure sitting over Iceland and the weather front's trailing down over Scotland, bringing some wet weather with it. So a bit of a wet morning, possibly a touch of winteriness over the Scottish hills. The rain moving southwards through the day today, heaviest in the west. Sunny spells and blustery showers following from the northwest. Top temperatures 12 or 13 degrees, but feeling a little bit cooler given the strength of the wind. Very gusty, in fact, out to the northwest. Through the night tonight, skies continue to clear. There'll be further showers coming in from the northwest. Under some of the long clear spells in the northeast, possibly a touch of frost here. Some of the showers a little bit wintry over the hills. Generally, overnight lows around three to six Celsius. It is going to be a cold feeling day tomorrow with the strength of the wind. Some sunny spells, but again, we've got showers to watch out for. And that's all from me for the moment. I'll be back with your lunchtime reporting Scotland. Have a lovely day. Bye bye. Welcome back. 19 minutes past nine is the time. Now, tens of thousands of children are at risk of being groomed and coerced into crime by organised gang. This according to a leading child protection expert. Professor Alexis Jay, who revealed the extent of sexual exploitation in Rotherham, is warning of an urgent and preventable crisis. Following an inquiry to the charity Action for Children, she has concluded there's no national strategy in place for dealing with this type of crime. 